Hello, my name's Dr. Stephen Stoltz and I'm from La Trobe University. I just want to talk to you about a co-edited book titled Theory and Philosophy in Educational Research, Methodological Dialogues. My colleagues who I collaborated with in this editor book is Dr. John Quay from the University of Melbourne, Dr. Jennifer Bleesby from Monash University, Dr. Maurizio Toscano from the University of Melbourne and Dr. Scott Webster from Deakin University. Each of us had this great privilege to interview um, uh, leading international scholars from around the world and part of the project was to ask them a series of questions which they all received and as a result the dialogues that were generated form the basis um, of the book uh, that's, uh, that will be published by Routledge in early 2018. Hi John, how are you? G'day Steve, good, thanks. Thanks for being here today. We might just start off here, if you can tell us a little bit, maybe as, as succinctly as possible, uh, about the first chapter, the first chapter that we did together as mm. a editorial group. Yes. So the first chapter is a chapter written by all the editors, and it is an opening chapter to the book. Uh, and as the title, the subtitle says, it's, it opens up that conversation about research that uh, is focusing on those methodological dialogues that make up the main part of the book. But in opening that conversation, uh, we needed to think about you know, the, the readers of the book, uh, colleagues, other academics working in education research, but also and especially research students, you know, people coming to education research for mm. the first time. So, and we're familiar with um, uh, you know, how people engage you know, initially with education research, especially about methodology, thinking that it might be uh, something they need to choose, mm. you know, am I going to do this methodology or that methodology? Uh, and uh, so trying to help people through those issues by using the analogy of catering. Uh, and so in the first part of that chapter, uh, we look at synergies between researching and catering. It sounds a bit, uh, a bit uh, awkward, but it actually works quite well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a recipe is sometimes used as an analogy for method. Mm -hmm. But then we very much want to move beyond that. So that's just an introduction. So in the second part of the chapter, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, the complexities and the intricacies of the location of theory in educational mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. uh, so utilising a particular theoretical approach, you know, mainly through the works of Dewey and Peirce. Uh, and then really, especially, really important, the third part of the chapter takes that, that analogy with catering to the level of the notion of cuisines. So cuisines as methodologies, mm -hmm. uh, and when we see methodologies in, in that way, uh, we can understand that there's a, a bigger picture here of you know, what's going on in terms of the judgments that are being made mm. in, in terms of the research process. Mm. So you know, cuisines uh, incorporate you know, all sorts of judgments of taste and flavour and norms in terms of cooking and recipes, mm -hmm. as do methodologies, uh, and so that sheds light on, on that part of the process. And so in particular, this first chapter, who do you think um, would be an ideal reader? or an audience, if you like, um, for that chapter, that first chapter? Yeah, so, uh, so the, uh, a research student, you mm -hmm. know, entering into the field of educational sure. research, you know, of course, but also it, it's not just a chapter for the beginner. Mm -hmm. um, it very much is a chapter that will assist and help all academics, sure. you know, working in education research to get another angle mm. on how research works. So it's not the simple you know, mm. this is how to do education research. Yeah. It's not as simple, this mm. is where theory sits. So it's not going to be like a recipe, like I'm a cook and who follows a recipe? Not at all. No. So no. I, I know you <coughs> talked about the analogy, but I just probably, that's a nice point mm. of clarification, really. It's not going to be a recipe as such, is it? No, no. So yeah. we <coughs> look at that and that enables us to raise that as a, an issue mm -hmm. where, you know, some research guides do talk about uh, uh, following a recipe mm -hmm. as, as your method. Mm. Um, but that sits within, within a much broader frame of understanding, yes. which we can then explore through the second and third parts of the chapter. Uh, John, tell us a little bit about chapter two here by Peter Roberts. And the, and the chapter of that title is Theory as Research, Philosophical Work in Education. I've got a feeling the subtitle's a little precursor to a little bit about what Peter's written about. Yeah, so thanks, Steve. Yeah, Peter raises a very important issue uh, that is a situated fantastically is that chapter two, mm. just before we get into these methodological dialogues. Uh, and uh, Peter's making the point that uh, rather than think about theory and research, mm. we need to think about theory as research. Yes. 
Uh, and actually moving right down to the last mm -hmm. chapter, Lynn Yates makes that same point mm -hmm. um, in relation to, you know, is theoret theoretical work uh, you know, so different than empirical work that they can't be discussed, mm -hmm. you know, together. So, so mm -hmm. the notion of theory and theoretical work mm -hmm. so uh, contributes to, well, is a contribution of philosophy of education. Mm -hmm. So those aspects of educational research, you know, are highlighted by Peter. Mm -hmm. um, and he also takes us uh, on a little journey into some of the practical aspects of that, you know, methods, methodologies, mm -hmm. yes. uh, and uh, theoretical frameworks mm -hmm. that are very important to understanding mm -hmm. uh, some of the dialogues that we've engaged in through the rest of the book. Yes. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for being here today. Um, uh, Jennifer's going to talk a little bit about her collaboration with Michael Apple. And if I were to ask you one thing, maybe succinctly, if possible, maybe one or two things to maybe Joe Blow in the street, what was probably one thing that you probably took away from your collaboration? So um, Michael Apple, of course, is known all over the world in education. Um, uh, specifically, I guess he's best known as a critical um, theorist mm -hmm. and as an advocate of critical pedagogy. Um, and he was one of the key people who brought that um, to America mm -hmm. uh, and also as a neo-Marxist. Uh, and I think one of the interesting things was um, Michael Apple said that he often feels like he's pigeonholed into those categories when he actually uses quite a wide range of different mm. theories, um, including various forms of feminist theory, uh, American pragmatism, critical race theory, mm. and a whole wide range of theories, as well as methodologies. Um, and so I think one thing that was really interesting was he actually emphasised that point of um, he worries that people in education kind of pigeonhole themselves a bit by, they'll, mm. they'll do things like say, I'm a critical theorist, therefore I better only use qualitative research or mm. pure theory mm -hmm. um, because quantitative research is, is bad. And that's mm. like associated with neoliberalism. Um, and he thought that was really problematic that we all should be trying to learn as many different methodologies and theories relevant to education mm. as, we, mm. as we can and use them as much as possible. And... Um, uh, in particular, he said, you know, it, even if you want to criticise testing or the use of statistics, and, and as he's done in education, then you you really ought to know about statistics, mm. and you mm. shouldn't think that's not relevant to you. So mm. that was a key thing he really emphasised, and I think some people will be surprised, um, might be surprised by some of those comments. Sure. 